record. But right now, what are we going to do about jobs? We need jobs. President Obama spoke last night about the economy. Is he on the right track, and is he aggressive enough? Former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin joins us live. Good evening, Governor. Hi, Greta. How are you? I'm very well, but there are a lot of Americans who aren't. They need jobs. Um, what are we going to do about jobs? Do you have an idea that's any way different from what the uh, president said last night? Because we're looking for all options. Well, speaking of last night, that was a tough speech to have to sit through and kind of try to stomach because the president is so off base in his ideas on how it is that he believes government is going to create jobs. Obviously, government growth won't create any jobs. It's the private sector that can create the jobs. And his theme last night in the State of the Union was the WTF, you know, winning the future. And I thought, okay, that acronym, spot on. There are a lot of WTF moments throughout that speech, namely when he made the statement, Greta, that um, he believed that uh, we can't allow ourselves to, I guess, eventually become uh, buried under a mountain of debt. That right there tells you he is so disconnected from reality. The problem is we are buried under a mountain of debt and jobs cannot be created by the private sector. We cannot grow and thrive and prosper as a nation when we are buried under this $14 trillion debt. You know, the thing that I find enormously distressful, and I'm lucky that Fox sends me out on the road so much because I get to meet people across the country. I get to walk the streets of small towns, medium towns. But even today, everyone was so excited because the Dow hit, tw tw hit 12,000 that it's, it fell back a little bit. But like that was some huge, great thing. And I thought to myself, yeah, big deal. The rich people could put money in the market. They could run it up past 12,000. But what about the person who's trying to get a job, who's been unemployed for six months, two years, who's having to shutter his or her business. I mean, it's like the attention's in the wrong place. Yeah, exactly. The Dow, it goes up and down. What we have seen in terms of consistency, though, is 20 months of nearly 10 percent unemployment, 17 percent of um, underemployment. And government is not doing anybody any favors by thinking that just growing more, spending more, the president's new term for spending more money and growing government is investing. Now, well, government is not doing our job creators any favors by growing government and taking over more of what the private sector could and be doing, certainly not doing anybody any favors when, as he said last night, he still supports uh, taxing a higher rate on the job creators. He says it's the 2% of the population that are the rich. Well, those 2% are the job creators, and it is punishing success, by the way. So what do what would what would you do? What should we do? Because as a practical matter, I mean, if you do lower taxes, it is indeed true there's less revenue into the Treasury. So we get deeper into debt and our deficit gets higher. I mean, this is sort of a trade off. But on the other hand, it gives uh, private uh, businesses a chance to have a little more money to try to get the economy going. But, you know, what exactly would you do differently than what the president is suggesting? obviously stop digging this hole that we are in. We have got to quit incurring the debt and uh, exercising this deficit spending that uh, Washington, D.C. has gotten just too comfortable with. And we do need to cut the budget, not just stall the spending spree that we have been on on this historic level of government growth, but actually start cutting. We need to cut these things that aren't constitutionally mandated, that are kind of on the periphery, the, the fluffery like uh, NPR and National Endowment for the Arts, those type of things, those are obvious. But we also have got to not fund Obamacare. That's a job killer. Not fund any kind of cap and tax program. That too, energy dependence on foreign countries and locking up more of our lands. Those are job killers. We've got to look at the entitlement programs and for new enrollees, we have to be honest with them and let them know with these entitlement programs that the benefits are not going to be the same benefits that those who have already paid into these programs for so many years are going to receive. Now, uh, Congressman Ryan and uh, Rand Paul, John Stossel, there are so many good libertarian and conservative ideas already out there. We've just got to start applying those with the political will that is needed in Washington. You know, and there's so many things that, you know, in terms of trying to get revenue, I know it's chump change, but and, I, and I've known I've been 
it sound like a broken record on it, but for the last two nights, I've been talking about the fact that the American taxpayers paid $160 million in, in attorney bills for some people who mismanaged Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're getting off with a civil investigation, not a criminal investigation. $160 million, that's chump change. Last night, the president talked about the fact that we have the Department of Interior regulating salmon, and we have the Department of Commerce regulating salmon. We hear about the SEC having lawyers who are downloading porn. Fire them. I mean, they're just, I mean, I realize it's chump change, but it's almost like politicians won't clean up their own house, that, and they run the government. They're the leaders. Now, that is exactly why Americans are so frustrated with Congress and with this White House. You have 435 House members. You have 100 senators. You have nine Supreme Court justices and one president. You add up that number, and you look at those 500 and some people, and you realize they are the ones making the decisions that affect our everyday lives and affect our opportunities to either create more jobs or see uh, uh, unemployment continue to, um, to uh, stay consistent at the level it is or even grow, unfortunately, in the future. They they are to be held accountable. People are frustrated with what goes on in Washington because you hear a lot of lip service, you hear the rhetoric, we heard it last night, and yet we don't see the changes. That's why I'm excited about the Tea Party movement, though. Look at the, the strength of Tea Party Americans ushering in, yes, some changes through the people that they elected. When you have people who are strong and principled and, and standing strong on their convictions about a smaller, smarter government and what we can do to shrink government and allow the state and our local communities and our families and businesses to have more control over our own lives, then we have hope because of people like Tea Party patriots who are not going to just embrace the status quo that Washington politicians would be so used to. Let me ask you about some of the entitlement programs. I mean, let's talk about unemployment um, insurance. A lot of people have been unemployed for almost two years. On occasion, we've extended the benefits. Um, you know, what do we do about these people? People really want to work, and they've tried, because a lot of, there's a lot of structural mismatch between skills that are needed in jobs and skills that people have. I mean, I mean people aren't just, a lot of people aren't just collecting unemployment because they want to sit home and eat chocolates. They'd much rather work. Um, yet, you know, what are we going to do? How do we help these people and, and actually get them back to work? We go back to the fundament, fundamentals of how it is that the private sector can create jobs. That's getting big government off our backs. It's allowing our job creators to keep more of what they earn so that they can reinvest according to their own priorities. And then they can hire more people and get people off those unemployment rolls. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to um, understand just these common sense solutions because they've been tried in the past and they've been proven in the past. And they're proven in local communities when we cut taxes and then jobs are created. They're proven in states when we, we have to sue the feds when they overreach and try to um, thwart the, the 10th Amendment rights that a state would have. We see a problem with that going on on the federal level too, by the way, Greta, is uh, Barack Obama, our president, believing that it is a federal centralized government and its growth that can be the solution to the problems that we face. Instead, allow the states to have more control. Allow our local communities, those on the front lines, the, the government that uh, governs least governs best and that usually is the most localized government you mentioned the tea party so i have to ask you about last night um the republican response from congressman ryan from the great state of wisconsin i might add um had the republican response and then uh, congressman michelle bachman had the tea party response and there was a lot of sort of grumbling behind the scenes at the capitol last night about her giving this tea party response uh, your thought, was she trying to steal the thunder from the Republican Party? Was she, is she a spoiler? Is she going rogue? Is she doing something important? I love it when anybody goes rogue uh, for the right reasons. And no, I appreciated that her message complimented uh, Representative Ryan's message, and that was fine. Both of their messages, too, those conservative, common sense messages that they had on how to get the economy back on the right track were really good, and they were sound. Uh, they were sound because they were in opposition to President Obama's message, which basically was, hey, the era of big government, it's here as long as I am, and I'm going to find a way to make you pay for big government. That was the president's message. Now, uh, both Michelle Bachman and Paul Ryan had messages that said, no, it's not big government growth that's going to be the answer. It's going to be our private sector being allowed, finally, to grow and to thrive and to prosper. That's the solution. Do you think that, uh, I mean, it, for a totally political strategy, if, uh, if I were running the Democratic Party and running the Republican Party, the first thing I'd worry about is that it's sort of a divide and conquer, that now uh, Michelle Bachman is dividing the Republican Party. That seems great for the, for the Democratic side. 
Well, you know, I've been accused of, of dividing within that establishment of the Republican Party, too, for some years now. And um, I don't see it as division. This is one thing that I love about the Republican Party. We believe in competition, even within our own party. You know, and we don't have just the fighting instincts of a bunch of sheep, like I think a lot of Democrats do. Instead, you know, we can duke it out in that uh, marketplace of ideas within our own party. And, and we can have individuals and individual um, uh, character traits uh, within then uh, politicians being able to be made manifest in, in the way that we uh, express our views, uh, that's all good. And we have healthy debate within the party. But I don't see that there is uh, a fundamental division just because Michelle uh, Bachman gave a, a speech last night that complimented another Republican speech. As a matter of fact, today, I think you're going to see dozens, if, if not uh, hundreds, of those who uh, have seats in Congress giving their responses as Michelle Bachman did last night. Governor, if you're gonna, we're going to have more questions with you, so please stick around.